Hey guys, and welcome to the um, Brisbane Carnival Preview at D- Doombin on Saturday. We've got a very special guest for probably three reasons this afternoon. Sooty, how you going, mate? You know, good. How you doing, mate? Good, good, good. And I know you've got a good handle on this program, and also you've got a horse running. So I thought, perfect opportunity to get you on. Yeah, I do. He's not a real winner, so I don't know if it's going to win this weekend. Price-wise, I think it's got a massive chance, but... We're horse that gets back like that. Guys, yeah, later on. Yeah, yeah. yeah a horse that gets back like that. So far, uh, you're always pushing, pushing it uphill, particularly at Durban. Mm. So I'm going with a great deal of hope, uh, but not much confidence. Okay, sweet. So it sounds like you'll be running for the prize money. No, I'll still back it for a stack, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That owner's confidence uh, will will yeah. consume me on Saturday, and I'll be straight into it. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. And uh, so you've had a look at the card. Do you like it? And also, uh, what kind of pattern are you looking for? Yeah, the meaning's okay with Doom, but I am looking for horses that do go forward. Uh, you can win from behind, but you do want a little bit of luck. Uh, you don't particularly want to sit wide in this tight. Uh, a, a track like Doom, but so uh, definitely horses going forward. I'm looking forward, to, um, looking for mostly. Yep. But yeah, it's a pretty good card, and uh, definitely a few bets there. And lots of these uh, line up between, you know, Sydney form and Queensland form too, isn't it? And I think, um, you know, I like doing these cards, just picking the eyes out of the Sydney form and seeing if they're the right ones or not. Um, but I'm assuming that you're just you're pretty much going to be doing it off raw figures more than the Sydney having more value than the than the Brisbane, or I've gone a couple of different ways over the years. I usually add three kilos to the Sydney form. However, I've I've, I've struggled a little bit doing that. the The difficulty with the horses coming from Sydney is they they've got to go on the float for twelve hours. So how that how they handle that, uh, how they get there, how they settle, I think that can pull that back a little bit. I certainly think the Sydney form's stronger. And back the other way around, if you've got to come from Brisbane and travel and take on the Sydney horses, it's you're a million to one. But going back the other way, I do not give as much as a bonus as I used to. Okay. Interesting stuff. Well, let's get stuck into it. Race one, 1,200 metres. And, um, yeah, we've got, uh, you know, we've got a, an interesting race, but I found it a difficult race. Uh, what have you found? Yeah, I didn't mind. Uh, track-wise, I've looked at it about a, a dead track. I think there's a little bit of rain forecast around, so I am not expecting it to get bottomless. Uh, so I'm looking for those horses who do like a little bit of cut in the ground. Uh, for this first race, I've got uh, number 11, self-indulgent on top. I've got it $3.40 at the moment. Current price is $4.20. It's third up off a win. Uh, it's going to go forward, potentially being outside lead. Uh, the only thing that scares me with this horse is that it was nine to one last start. Uh, so that's put me off, but it's only had 13 starts. So that's for me is relatively lightly raced. <laughs> so I'm not too, not too concerned uh, about prices for horses having their, um, yeah, the first third, third prep also. So Definitely, definitely worth a bet. Uh, race one, number eleven. I'm also going to have something on number twelve, Amity Girl, Amity Gal. So I've got it five dollars ten. Uh, there's eight dollars around. This can push forward, uh, coming up from from a thousand meters up to twelve hundred. Uh, it's third up now. It's ready to go. It won three times last prep, so I, I think it can perform better uh, than what the market's suggesting at the moment. So two bets in this race, uh, number 11, self-indulgent, number 12, Amity Gal. And so you're getting rid of the Estero stuff, you know, a um, a midway horse has made the progression to a proper Saturday Metropolitan victory um, and uh, you haven't found it, no? Map negative? I've, I've got it $6. Yep. Uh, what I tend to do with the, with the horses coming off a heavy win, I'm a little bit sceptical. So I want to see it do... I want to see it have done that before. So it had done that before back in that benchmark 72, which is the the midway. 
it rated about the same. The midways, I'm a bit iffy on as well. I'm always yep. wanting to see something else to frank that form. I couldn't see anything else to frank it to give it a real bonus. Uh, and it's having its 12th start this prep. So there's a couple of negatives there, which stop me from pricing it shorter. I've got it around $6, which is kind of where the market is. I can't knock it, but I'm definitely not going to be backing a horse like that where there's a couple of question marks. Okay, well, I'm backing one horse in this race, and I'm backing number 12, Amity Girl. Um, when I did this race, there was a few horses of interest, and then when I looked at the prices afterwards, I thought, well, this is the um, this is the, the value runner in the race. Um, yeah, interesting. Like, uh, if you have a look at what it did last preparation, it's super solid. It's got the dominant win over 1,200 at Doombin. I love that. So Doombin, I sort of handle similarly to, say, like a Kenzo, where I do like, I give an extra tick or an extra bonus on the way I do things if you've actually run well at the course before. Definitely ticks that box. Lovely preparation, last preparation, some nice trials, and then sort of weirdish. I thought that that run at Doom and first up over the 12 was um, a perfectly fine pass mark, and then four-week freshen up, nice trial at Deegan, and then over 1,000, um, sort of, and then came home quite nicely over the 1,000, so I'm giving it a tick up to the 12, liking the $8, um, Obviously, Jimmy Byrne off for Berryman on is, you know, marginal, but it's in that price range where I'm not so concerned about that particular change. I, I thought it was an easy bet around the $8. Now, it can cross and lead if it wants to, but there's only two, I think there's only two positions it can be in, Sorry, and that is it's either leading or OSL, one or the other. And I like it when I know where my horses are going to map. Um, it'd be devastating to me if they decided to be um, neutral or quiet because of the wide barrier, which some trainers have the tendency to do. But um, they should really use this thing up early and it'll give you a good sight around that $8 range. So um, some degree of consensus there in the first. Um, and, you know, it takes a fair amount for me, Shorty, to, um, you know, to go against the Sydney form. So there you go. There you go. That might That's be right. something in itself. Uh, let's move on to race two, 1350, three-year-olds. What do you got? I thought the 11, Ekaterina, uh, was a massive chance here. I've got it at $1.90. It's currently uh, was $3.55 last I look. Uh, if it didn't get back, I'd be declaring this horse. Uh, its last start rating was good enough to to win here. Uh, it's got Tim Clark, Barrier 1. Uh, I'll be unloading. $1.90. So that's aggressive pricing, mate. Jesus. Yeah, it is. Yeah, these uh, and I, I do get a bit caught out with these three-year-old races where I do price them too aggressively, uh, and they do tend to get to the end of their prep and fall over, and and a lot of things happen when they're three-year-olds. You can come out of a, a benchmark race, get to these races, and uh, um, and and perform better. So it's it's a little dangerous for me. I still bet as confidently as the pricing suggests for me. Uh, but I do think this horse should go really well. There's a bit of Sydney stuff coming up, which I'm a little bit worried about. Uh, but I'm against some of those horses and horses like Count de Beans I'm against. So it just left me last one standing was this 11. Uh, there was one other horse I thought looks looks over the odds at the moment, which is number one, Sandpaper. I've got this $3.90, so basically the main danger um, – so to me, in my pricing, it looks the only danger. It's going to push forward with Nash. Uh, it's rating really well. A couple of hidden runs there. I think this is the danger. So I'll be backing two of the, uh, both of those. I'll be backing Ekaterina and the Sandpaper. And um, with a large degree of confidence off pricing, by the looks of it. Yes. Um, where are we going to just going to have a look at a, bit, a little bit of a map here? Uh, yeah, well, um, I'm... I'm, I mean, I totally understand what you're saying about number 11, but I, I thought that was just a fifth, fifth start this preparation, you know, super exposed, getting late prep. They're not horses I'm willing to take really short prices about. But, yeah, it's got some stuff in some decent races. But the one that's massively back in grade is uh, number three, Counter Beans. Um, I'm happy to back this one. Uh, I was sort of – I think there might have been a, a, a mild little firm up here because, yeah, there, there has been. So, um my thing with this one is we're still early prep, so we're third up this preparation. Both runs this, this prep have had a reasonable amount of merit. I mean, our Pine Edge, Emerald Kingdom, we own a smart one. That, that's superior than any stuff in this race. 
That was a $775,000 race. And then I look, okay, do I have any evidence about what this horse can do at Doombin? I mean, have a look at the when it went for the spell. 1350 at Doombin was the run before it went for the spell. Okay. So I'm getting 1350 at Doombin. So let's have a look what it did in that race. It came second by a tiny mar- margin to Fashion Legend. That's just better than this. And there was a margin to the third horse as well. Um, on that occasion, J Mac was riding it, which, you know, obviously means we treat it with some degree of caution. But I thought. Right stage of the preparation, back in grade, proven in a far superior stuff at Doombin. I was actually happy to back number three, count the beans, um, have it on top. And um, I'm hoping for a little bit of softness, but uh, let's see what happens. Let, let's hope let's hope the Sooty Warriors or Sooty himself um, backs Ekaterina into $2.20, and then I'll be getting a lovely price count the beans. So that's great. Eh? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> let's move on to race three over thirteen fifty again. What do you got? Race three, I've got the seventeen Argyle Pink on top. Oh, I've got around five sixty. The market's only about six fifty at the moment. Uh, it's going to go forward from fifteen. I have penalised it from that barrier out there, but if it can slot across uh, and get in or uh, get to the lead or outside lead, I think it's going to be a great chance. Uh, uh, there was another one here, uh, number 16, Petunia. I've got it at $8.40. It's currently $17. It's had coming back off the 63-day layoff. So short break, one, not a big deal. Yeah, Yeah, one first up last prep. So when they have that, when they have that short spell during the um, – with a let-up or a spell, if they come back and they've won last prep, I tend to take them on their best rating for that last prep. I'm not so worried about the the break. Uh, that depends. It can be a there can be a reason why they have the break. It could be a a problem with the horse. But I don't worry so much if they've won first up before. I think they can perform fresh, and a lot of the horses do perform fresh, and I only perform fresh. So if they've performed fresh before, I'm more than happy to take them on. I think the the market has factored in the layoff uh, a little bit too much. Uh, so I think it definitely can can be in the finish here. So I'll be back in two horses, number 17, Argyle Pink, and number 16, Petunia. Yeah, well, I knew that you weren't going to find this horse that I found, and this is just the easiest bet you've ever seen, guys, and it's number two, Meritable. Um, Annabelle Nisham, stable, absolutely flying. Um, she's had it for a little while now after changing training trainers, um, ran up in some all right stuff, uh, last preparation up in Queensland, but has gone down to head office for Annabelle down in Sydney. And that last trial at Canterbury was sensational. It was over the 1,100 metres. I love 1,100 metre trial to be ready for 1350 first up. The stuff it did in Queensland is good enough to win this race easily. And um, I've heard that it's going very well. J-Mac rode it in the trial. J-Mac rides it here. Um, options to be a little bit map positive from Barrier 1, which I think um, they'll use. And it could be the horse that is just better than these. And what a great time to jump on and take this price. Um, easy bet for me, number two, Meritable. Um, and just have a look at the way that trainer's going at the moment. Isn't, isn't she fantastic? So I'm saying she's going to be the best trainer in Australia. That's a big call. I think she's fantastic too. Yeah. But you know that ickiness you get when you look and you go, I really like this horse. Then you look at the uh, at the trainer and this horse, there's, there's trainers yeah. that yeah. I feel icky with. And there's, there's other ones I feel really comfortable with. And Annabelle's mm-hmm. definitely one that I'm very comfortable backing. I uh, really like the horses. They perform the way you expect them to. They're, they've got good winning strike rates, all the things I'm looking for in a bet. So more than happy to back Annabelle. Beautiful. Well, that um, that that sounds like a juicy race, but we're going to be uh, we're going to be butting heads yet again, and we love butting heads, don't we, Sooty? Hey. Oh, I just those, the horse over the 350 days. I used to back when I used to just use the ratings and I just bet off that and t- not take into account those big long layoffs. Geez, they were unprofitable. Oh, but... they're massively unprofitable. If you look at it, all of them. If you just did did a search, which you have and I have as well, it is so negative, um, which means I wouldn't be. It's a weird one because normally a horse with this kind of profile um, is massively soft in the market, um, because Sindos who are using similar stuff to we're using will be really aggressive trying to get them out late. On this occasion, I'm not a hundred percent sure that's going to happen, but 
theoretically, massive spells, 61 and a half kilos first up. They, there would normally be some super softness. But um, there's also... The trainer's got, yeah, trainer's got much better at getting these horses ready first up, even off very long layoffs. Back, there's not those days where you're going to take three or four runs to get ready. The horses are pretty close to their top from the first start. Man, I mean, you know, like, 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 have a look at some of this. What this horse has done over in New Zealand over similar distance. It's uh, and it, uh, for me, I give it a positive uh, uh, trainer change as well. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. But uh, that's just an auto bet for me. I'm not rushing into the price, guys. As I mentioned, because Sooty's mentioned why it might be soft, and I have as well. I, I'll be waiting. Um, but if it firms, I'll back it, and if it blows, I'll back it. Which is what I say all the time, don't I, Sooty? It's just. Um, I don't care about markets uh, because, what can I say? My horses win as often as, as I rate them rather than whether they firm or blow. A lot of them firm, but it doesn't seem to affect their, uh, their winning percentages, which is a weird thing, guys. Super weird thing. Uh, let's move on to race four over 1,600 metres. And this is the big race. I want a, I want a thorough review of this race, race see? Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> So I do what I do with brutality. It's hard when you're you're an owner uh, or connected to the horse. It's hard to rate them, but I do try because I have quite a mechanical way. I do the form. I do rate it like I would normally, uh, and then throw that at the bin and then back it. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> no wonder, no uh, wonder bookmakers just say they've got normal bet limits. But if you're an owner, you can have as much on as you want. <laughs> yeah. But it does, and it does then work out. It does change the amount that I bet and how much to back it for and things like that. So uh, in this case, I've rated it properly and I have brutality on top. So I've got it around the $3.90 mark. It's currently $5. So with brutality is one of those horses though. It's You could have it rated the best, but it's all going to come down to how the track's playing, how it jumps out. Uh, and what it does. So you can see by its last sectionals, the horse is flying. It's going really, really well late, but it's just not getting put into the race. So I'll give I'll give a tip for any jockeys out there. If you've done no work to the 600, get your horse going from the 600, six to the four and get it into the race. Get it three or four lengths off them. Don't wait to the last 200 to give it to let it just fly home into into six. Crack, crack with the whip, even at the six hundred, mate. That's what you're asking for. That's right. Yeah. If you if you do that, what you do from the uh, from the the four hundred to home now, and if you do that between the six and the two, you're going to be in the race and you'll be there to win the race. If it if it tires late and you and and you lose, so Maybe. be it. But yeah. put it into the race. You see the difference between the Villiers and the horse may have been going a little bit better then, but in the Villiers, it comes around the corner, it's sliding up three wide. It's within three, four lengths of the leader at the 400. If you do not do that on a back marker, you have zero chance of making up eight lengths. So the horse last time, the leader won that race, Cold Crusher won. So it's very difficult to make that ground if the leader's going to win. But if there's a bit more pace on, it's going to come, come back to you. But if you've done no work to the 600, don't slide back another two lengths and let the other ones get around you and do things like that. Yeah, Put but, yourself but, into the but, race. But have a look at this map, Sooty. You're going to be dictated to. You're out of barrier two. So if they're coming back on you, you're not going to be able to get going, are you? So, so how is anything you, you, going to change? But you can cop that. But what normally happens is what's happening the last few races. No, but I'm saying how have you got it right 390? Back. How have you got it 390 when a similar situation is going to happen where there's a, ch a good chance you won't be able to get going early? Well, this horse can take inside runs, so it can slide up, slide up, slide up, and just and ride for luck. So I don't mind that if you're going to ride for luck and be a little bit closer. So with particularly for horses in Hong Kong, if you're coming from outside in, if you're a back marker, I don't mind it so much if you can get up in two lengths closer. So what I'm hoping for here is it does sit two lengths closer than what it normally would, and then you're going to end up riding for luck. So you're going to need luck to get out. So I'll cop that. If you're midfield and requiring luck, that's fine. If you're going back to two lengths last then you've got to put yourself into the race at some stage. So I, I don't think it's going to be two lengths last year, but it has. that's what's been happening in its last few runs or last how many runs. You can't, between that six and the four, give another two lengths away by going back, going back, going back, and then trying to get to the outside. And so what, so I'm hoping what, for what here are we is... doing? Who are we backing? Because I, I just like the aggressive pricing that you're throwing out right now just 
I don't know. You, it seems like you're very keen. Three dollars ninety, mate. There's, you've got some massive overlays tomorrow. Bloody hell! Yeah, three dollars. I've got three dollars ninety. I, I think that's a. I think that's a fair price. I think it'll be get backed, but it's a funny horse. It needs to be ridden, ridden well. And uh, uh, Craig Williams going on tomorrow. I'm happy with. I think Craig will give it its best chance to win. Uh, the horse is going very well, and I'd expect it to be in the finish. So and I'll who, definitely be who backing. Who are your it. dangers? Who are your dangers? Uh, the two dangers I've got a number eight Irish Playboy. Uh, I've got a seven eighty. It's twelve twenty at the moment. It was held up last start. Had three wins last prep. So I think it's got some hope. Uh, the other one is number five Master Jamie. I've got it seven eighty. It's currently thirteen twenty. It's been thereabouts and has claims. Uh, a bit against some of the other horses there. Uh, so I'll end up probably backing three. I'll probably save on those other two, but. I will be back in brutality for a lot. Yes, well, uh, gourdbet.com.au. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have it anywhere near $3.90. I'm not sure it's with us. I've got problems with the map. Um, there's uh, It's map negative. There's uh, there's plenty of question marks there for, for me to um, to be quite happy to have it longer than $3.90. Uh, we'll see how we go. How do I get good? <laughs> well, I've got, a, I've got to beat $6.75, mate. That's the best available at the moment. Um, and I, I can do that. Uh, no, I can't. No, I can't. I don't hold any bets, guys. I'm sorry, Zoddy. No, don't know what I was talking about there. No idea. Won't be holding a bet. Just personally, if I was a bookmaker, I would be happy to lay it. Definitely at current top odds. Um, <laughs> by the way, I thought the two interesting runners here. Look, I mean, this is an afterthought, but I thought you were gonna, you were definitely gonna make the danger number one, Sunshine Rising. Now, I know it hasn't won, but that's like proper form. It's got small margins. Um, this, I think, is sort of a, a weaker race. You notice the two runs on the good tracks at Rose Hill definitely line up and would be super competitive in, in this. Um, Zayrak lines and stuff like that. The last start, which was mildly disappointing at Ramwick, was on a, on a wettish track. You know, I'm forgiving a lot of those runs carnival time at Ramwick. Sorry, I just thought the track was playing that weird that you can sort of ignore bad performances there. So back to the 1,600 metres um, on a better track than what it ran over last start. But then I look at the price, mate, and I'm, I'm Nashosh for Josh Power on, and I've got to take $4.60 to find out. That seems too short to me as well. But it, I do have it on top. Um, the one that I thought could improve dramatically getting to the 16 now was a horse, a blue colour horse that I don't have a massive opinion of, but it's number 11, Alcyon. Um, yet again, both runs this preparation have been over 1,400 metres. They were both on wet tracks. And then I've got um, I've got a couple of nice runs down in Melbourne at Flemington, one over 18. Oh, oh, there's a couple of runs there. The, the second to Carlisle is uh, reasonably nice. Um, running in some decent stuff at Ramwick on a soft six on that occasion was quite nice. The second to quality time, Rose Hill, 1,900. That's quite nice. So I just think getting uh, like 14-14 up to the 16 on a slightly better track will mean that it, um, what can I say? Um, it's going to show its best. It, it's grand final day, day tomorrow, uh, and it's $8 to find out. So they were the two horses of interest for me. Um, but, you know, I'm not super confident or keen on, on these kind of races. They're more for guys like Sooty, but maybe we take Sooty's tip with some degree of caution, maybe. <laughs> but he said he's done it raw. He's just done it off raw figures, haven't you, Sooty? So, you know, <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I can't Did believe I... there isn't some bias in there, mate. But anyway. <laughs> this week's the week, I promise. Yeah. Okay. If it's going to uh, win, if it's going to win, it's going to be this week. And just before we move on to race five, um, I, I you, maybe you know better than me, but I think Combat is doing auctions and trading for the Brisbane Carnival. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Uh, so Combat is going to open up for Brisbane uh, for the first time this weekend. Uh, so we will be doing some auctions. I'm not sure if we're doing it on all the races. Uh, but Generally, there will it's be... just the last four races or something like that, isn't it? Four or five races? or That's right. Yeah, Jake, Jake wants to do auctions on every single race. Uh, the problem is at the moment, there's not enough volume in there, not enough guys in there doing it to make it worthwhile. What's happened last week, we had 
three one horse that was seven dollars fifty, you go for three hundred dollars at auction because no one well, wanted to back a, it. Uh, Rand is out there. Get on and take advantage of it. There's so many. Even even when the the auctions are mature, which means there's some people trading on, they still go around what average ninety five percent, something like that. Is that correct or not? No, that's, some of the some of them get out to uh, close to to one hundred percent, but most of them are going under. So if you like money, like most of us do, <laughs> you have to get the combat <laughs> because they're handing out fifties. Yeah. So. <laughs> I can't believe everybody's not doing it, man. And guys, it's so easy. I've put a bet. I, I think I'm making, what am I making off you? Something like I'm making over 300% off you. And I'm not even doing it anymore because I want you guys all to have a chance. So um, I'm just watching at the moment. It's money for nothing and you should be taking advantage of it. And guys, don't be scared of the auctions and don't think you've got to watch them all the time. If, I don't really have any time on Saturday to do it properly, but on the odd occasion that I have, I just stick in a bid um, in the morning and I just leave it there. And if I get set, I get set. I don't need to worry about it. It's a long time before the races jump, so it's not urgent or anything like that. And if I if I get in to win, uh, to win a couple of dollars at really juicy price, I think one price I took was like $2.80 or 90 or whatever and ended up jumping $1.80. So, um, um, guys, yeah, take advantage of it and uh, we'll see how we go. I'd really like to know the ones you're doing the auctions on, but... Um, and by the way, the ones that you're not doing the auctions on, what percentage are you going up there? Uh, it would be 110. So there you go, guys. Yeah. Everywhere else, 122. There'll be 110 uh, early in the morning. Uh, and by the way, this, is yeah, an, just... this isn't an ad, guys. I'm just letting you guys know because seriously, take and take, you know what I mean? Getting, as, as sort of said, at the moment, because there's not a lot of liquidity, means that the prices are even better than they would be or might be further down the track. And you've got to take advantage of it now, guys. Like a couple of my mates are getting on at sensational prices and making plenty of money off Jake. So um, um, well may it continue for all ranters. Uh, yeah, just just, just yeah. with Jake there, what, what Jake what Jake's done there has been absolutely fantastic. I, I sincerely believe what Jake has done with Combat is the best thing since Betfair. And if it gets the support it deserves it can continue. the auctions should be becoming something that all early people betting early should be getting into if you're betting below 100 percent into those auctions for five uh, if you do it through an order getting on for 5k is very significant then you can look late and look around we're going to be uh, competitive late getting on uh, you know, at that price early then having a look at betfair and having a look around the market late is completely significant to whether you're going to win or lose betting. It's just such a kick along to be able to do that. And I think oh, Jake, yeah. you know, in an industry that lacks innovation, what Jake has come up with uh, for that early betting and have that liquidity early and to be able to get the bets on, which Betfair doesn't have, uh, really, the market should be out there. Well, stop it. being girls and up it to ten thousand. Don't be a girl, Jake. Up at the ten thousand. Well, Jake, mate. Jake did Bloody that. Hell. Up at the twenty thousand, Jake. Come on, mate. Have some balls. Eh? We want to. The problem ah! is. <laughs> you, you the problem is with that is if you don't have guys, we'd take them for all their money. Bloody hell. No, but he's got three. Just say you've got five guys doing it. The risk of something going to three hundred and, and you know, losing such a significant amount in that race is is very high the more people you get it the more sustainable it is the more jake can lift the limits do additionally to what um what everybody wants but i don't think there's that many guys out there that that bet to those levels so you end up having just the, the pinnacle knocking it about let's move on to race five and find find another winner two-year-olds 1200 meters what do you got it's so a race five I could only find one bet here. It's pretty much around what the market was. Uh, the one bet would be number nine, Armed Forces. It started for its first start, started on a heavy track. I don't know whether it handled that well, but it was five to one. Gets J-Mac now. And if there's any horse that I think is probably priced incorrectly, it, it, it is that horse. So I would definitely be having something on it. Two old races aren't my go, but I do like to look at horses that failed, and if they've got reasons to fa fail, such as going too fast or or heavy track, I definitely want to back them at their second start. Well, they got so completely you got J -Mac, owned. Waller. Got completely owned by Ducasse, number eight last start. Um, but there's one little thing you haven't mentioned there, mate. And uh, who's the sire of Armed Forces? 
Um, by the way, you're asking me on shooters for dudes, but I haven't. I haven't had a that's, look. I am invincible. I am invincible. Oh, so, so, so that's okay. just that's nearly as bad as for doubts, isn't it? So yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I don't. Yeah. I don't look too much at breeding. I yeah. I care about the. Uh, I care about what they do, and just from the data, armed forces here. I don't want it. Wet. But you don't have any I, I data about run. it, mate. You, your decision there is just just of JMAC going on an SP, isn't it? That's what you're doing. Right. Correct. Yeah. So if those two factors, I think it's worth a bet, and I think it will firm, and I think it should run well. Yeah, sweet. Um, I'm interested in two horses in this race. Oh, well, not two horses. I'm only interested in one horse. Um, and the one I'm going to back is number one, Emperor of Japan. I, I just think it's the one with the absolute A-grade lines as far as two-year-olds are concerned. Um, so it's run against your Shinzos, your Cylinders, being competitive in those races, smallish margins. And that was just a really beautiful um, Snowden trial. Like Snowden's very soft in the trials. It was really nice sort of late going through the line. And it's the one that's got the line through the absolute A graders. And I'm getting $7 to find out. Um, easy bet for me. Uh, number one, Emperor of Japan. Another thing too, guys, is the 1,045 metre trial for the 1,200 as well. Not a little short coursing trial. And the other one that I thought would improve the most off the obvious lead up, which is the 1,100 metres at Rose Hill, actually was Sooty's Horses. I was just going to completely give that 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 um, that a miss. I thought the J Mac and the, and the getting on top of it on a better surface might be the secret to it. But um, Interesting to say for you to say that it's going to firm. I wasn't a hundred percent sure there because normally in early markets, that's when you're paying the most J Mac tax. So it'll be interesting to see which way it goes there. But um, I could entertain something small on that. But the easy bet for me is number one, Emperor of Japan. Uh, let's move on to race six over two thousand meters, and I. Uh, I'm sure you're going to um, talk for about three hours here, Sooty. So off you go. Put lots of exposed form here, mate. Yeah, but it's 2,000 metre form, which is not not that great. Mm -hmm. So some real pluggers here. I do like doing them because they're quite easy to do because they have that progression through the prep so you can start rating them and work out where they are and give them bonus penalties to get to that price that you fall on. But they never run like that. It's all pace dependent and it makes it really difficult. So I didn't spend a huge amount of time on this race. I didn't find a great deal of value. Uh, I had number three, Cepheus, on top. Uh, I've got it 640. The market's around that currently. Uh, it's got Nash and it rates well. So if I was going to tip in the race, I'd be backing that. I'd need to probably get a price. These runners probably will get out. Market's only about 170 at the moment. So when that market comes down, I bet fair I should be able to get something on that. Uh, number two is second pick, Yonkers. Uh, $7.10, I've rated that. And it's currently around the nine. It's got J-Mac on. It's had excuses its last two. Uh, like the jockey dropped the whip last time. and It was lame first up. So it's had a couple of excuses there, which the uh, market may have missed why it's slightly different to what I've rated it. And the third horse here, the value in the race is number 11, Red Wave. I've got it $16. It's $41 currently. It's been slowly away its last two. So if I can jump okay here from barrier three and just slot in and get a good run, I think it's got some chance. Uh, it's a winner three back. So it has got some decent form before those slowly away last twos. So it it will be my best way in the race. And I'll definitely have something on it. And that win so, was at Joombin as well. Yeah. It was. I think it was over the 1,600. I'll just double check. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yes. That doom burn over the 1,600 in the Class 6. Uh, it was 13 to 4 that day, one by two lengths. It's That's good enough to win this. Uh, so it has those excuses. It was too wet, uh, two starts back. So if it does get to that slow seven, heavy eight range, I won't be backing it. Uh, but if it can stay in that five, maybe six, Is, will... Isn't isn't Cephas like to be honest? Even if it's soft, you don't back it. It's got to be on a good track, yeah. Which is, is that that which one we heavy might get failure? to. Yeah. I don't. It's had uh, one soft five star at Newcastle when it dwelled at the start. Mm. Uh, I I can't stamp it that it can't run it on a five. Yeah, well, I, well five. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, five's all right. Five's all right. Yeah, if, if, yeah, definitely if it got down, 
if it started getting worse and that started getting heavily affected, I'd be worried about Cepheus and I'd be worried about uh, Red Wave as well. Well, yeah. There we go. Forty to one tip. You don't. You don't get that. You don't get that on racing ranch shows very often. Uh, not unless. Not unless you come on, Tony. So. <laughs> I did try and cut down. I did try and cut down today. I said, no, I won't tip a million, all these million to one shot. <laughs> yeah. I'll just focus on who I think is going to win. Okay. Well, uh, race seven, 2,000 metres, group three, three-year-olds. What do you got? You had no interest in that last race? No. Straight through to the keeper? Yeah. 33. 33. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, race seven, so three-year-old race. Uh, I couldn't find much value in this race. I've got. Kovalika, a dollar ninety. The market's a dollar ninety-five. It was wide throughout and still won last start. Gets J Mac, looks immoral. Can I back it? No. Uh, there was one horse I thought, if it gets the run, uh, so if it gets the right run in the race, number sixteen, so dazzling. I've got it nine forty. It looks to have ability. I gave it a two kilo penalty for the barrier. So if it does get in cheaply and does get across and not get that two kilo worth of, of penalty, it could definitely do something. So I'll what definitely be watching the price for that. If it does get out and does get to a decent price, I may be willing to to have a throw at the stumps and, and, and bet on it getting the run. And if it does get the run, I think it is the danger to Kovalika. Mate, dead set, three year old Phillies John Sargent. Um this uh, this certain rules I have where I just bet because they're never in the market. Although, see, I think $10 is too short for this one. I think people have cottoned on to my little one variable profitable thing that I've been using for about 10 years now. Um, uh, yeah, he, he's just he's just an expert at getting um, three-year-old fillies over distance. He's, he's the best in Australia at it, John Sargent, uh, saying that $10 is too short for me to, um, to get involved, uh, particularly because number one is just such a scary horse. So the decision I need to make and I haven't made yet is um, I either back number one Kovalika or I don't bet in the race. Um, it's as simple as that. I mean, people, I, I thought, you know, more people would try and argue the vowels should be closer to it in price. And I was going to disagree with that and say that Kovalika has upside, has the awesome win course and distance. So too, wasn't it? Last preparation, I think. Uh, yeah, Doombin, like uh, 2,000 yeah, metres of Doombin, just, just absolutely smashed them. Um, so proven there, horse going on to better stuff, um, lovely return to racing, good track undefeated. Oh, man, there's so much to like about it. But, you know, it's not it's not a, a take the race by the scruff of the neck kind of horse, is it? So it's got to be a little bit cautious about um, taking your um, – two shorter odds and then you've got the horse that finished close to it in the vows last start coming home quite nicely uh, saying that i don't care one decision to make do i back over like or not and i haven't decided at the moment uh let's move on to um a race where we can quite happily take a short price uh the doombin ten thousand. what do you got yeah, it's a good race i think giga kick's a fantastic horse best in australia so I'm always trying to find a reason not to back these type of horses, though. So I'll do my best. Okay, okay. I love this. Show me the narrative, baby. <laughs> so uh, I've got on top, I've got number eight, Giga Kick. I've got it at $2.20. It's not going to get to $2.20. Can I make money at $1.75? Never. It's got a tricky map, this horse. It's the best horse by a long way. Um, I... You, I could consider taking the odds on at Randwick or Flemington, those big open tracks. When you get to Doombin, uh, it's just a bit icky. So you can leave me out of odds on horses. Uh, the two horses that I thought had some chance were the, the two ponies that travelled up to keep Brutality Company. Um, number <laughs> one, Eduardo. It's been scratched, uh, hasn't it? Has it been scratched? Uh, yes, it has. Sorry, so it's yeah. come out the last half an hour. So I'll just yeah. scratch that out. So, yeah, he was obviously just up there for the travelling companion to keep him company. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The there for eight, mil- eight million dollar prize money horse, so keeping uh, brutality company. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> it makes it makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Uh, so that will then leave me with the other one, which is uh, Maria Mia. So I've got that Maria Mia around the ten dollar mark. Uh, it's currently 
27 dollars again it's likely to go forward with eduardo coming out that pace is going to come out of that race even further so maria mia is going to go forward and sit somewhere up there so it's going to be ahead of giga kicks giga kicks going to run it down it most likely will um, a little bit sus on the galaxy form ratings wise it rates well um, but i'm a little bit sus about it but if I'm going to need Giga Kit to have a little bit of bad luck here for it to stop it winning. But when you're getting $27 for Maria Mia, uh, it's definitely worth a bet. So I'm going to have something on Maria Mia. Can't back Giga Kit at that price. I mean, if you're if you're suggesting it, it's the danger and it's $27, there's nothing wrong with an each way bet, mate. Right. Yeah, I've been doing a lot more uh, place betting than than I was in the past. Uh, more so probably in Hong Kong for a couple of other reasons, but uh, it's yeah at twenty seven dollars. Yeah, it's definitely worth something uh, for the place. I think yeah. some of these other horses are a bit sus. The weather against Mazu comes into it. Uh, I'm a bit sus on that Valana race. Some of those other ones are no good. I'm against Aft Cabin. I think it should be much longer. So it leaves me with only a couple of. Uh, a couple of horses that I'd consider, which one of them's now scratched. Uh, so I'll have something on Maria Mia. Yeah, um, uh, gig kicks a dead set moral, guys. Uh, anything over a dollar fifty is fine. This is this is just a horse that's got that much on them that you don't even care about. Maybe a mildly negative map position. It, it, it's getting to the stage that I have that much of an opinion with this horse that I'm I'm sort of treating it like these other stars, you know, like your black caviars and stuff like that, where they just like even if they're short, you just still back them because they. They just got that much on the opposition. I, I was hoping for a little bit of resistance in the market because this is a sort of a semi afterthought, you know, 1400 meters last start, sort of back to the 12 now, getting later preparation, you know, obviously sort of um, afterthought rather than grand final. Saying that, I, I seriously am just throwing that stuff in the bin because I just think this is the best horse in Australia. And um, if I get anything over dollar fifty on what I think is the best horse in Australia, then I just bet, and I will be backing it tomorrow. And guys, like if there's some nice things out wide that you think are like, um, you know, overs at the moment, like in your weird racetracks, and you want to disguise some bets, then just um, have all ups with Giga Kick into them, and um, your account might stay um, a little bit more disguised for a bit longer. Uh, saying that, I just announced it on the show. So uh, I won't be personally doing that, but I'd suggest it might be a good idea. Uh, moral. Uh, and the last of the day, uh, 1,110 metres. What do you got? Uh, race nine. I've got the nine on top here, extremist. I didn't, I've got it $5.90. I think that's pretty similar to the market. I think it might, might be a touch shorter around that $5 mark. Uh, leads here, so the pace is going to dictate as to what price I'm willing to take and obviously what's happened earlier in the day. If it does get really wet and they start coming down the outside or, or it's a bit pick-up sticks, then I will be definitely won't be back in this. But if they are, if the track stays relatively firm and they are leading and, and winning, uh, this is the, the horse that I could back in the race. Uh, the others here I've got around the market, so no knock on, on, uh, on any of the horses here. And I couldn't remember it in other bets, but the only bet I could have in the race, number nine extremist. Number nine extremist, yeah? Yep. And even though it's under what you've assessed it at, it's the only horse you went looking for, yeah? Is that the guy? Yeah, it's the only horse I could back in that scenario, but it would depend on what's happening during the day. So if they are leading and winning, I'll definitely consider bringing that in a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's a wait and see. I, de I won't be back again early. I won't back it now. But the price now, I'd, I'd have to wait and see what happens with it. Um, there's a few here they might come for. So I just want to see what happens with the betting. But the only one I could have a bet, if I have a bet, is that number nine. Look, this horse that I'm going to back is not a horse that can take it by the scruff of the, scruff of the neck, but I am going to declare it a moral. Um, a moral, what can I say? A moral in this sort of price range for me. And that's number five, Hellfest. Um, this is a blue colours horse that actually has serious ability. And if it's right, it'll win. Uh, probably has to overcome a negative map. That was absolute A-grade um, um, 
Cummings trial at Royal Randwick over the 1,080 metres to get it ready for this. Um, I think that this is a bloody good horse. It's not 100% proven yet, but um, my eye and my feel and maybe something else is suggesting that this horse has more ability than the rest. So um, at $9, it's just an easy bet for me, just an auto bet for me. So I'm very happy to back it. Um, interesting, like the other one I was interested in was the other blue colours horse, Siege, which you'll notice is, uh, sort of he's had three starts first up for three victories. Um, the problem with those first up victories for Siege were they were against very weak opposition. So I'm not sure how much I can give a tick to that um, to that data point. Uh, but it is an interesting one, and I liked its trial as well. So I am uh, Hellfast from Siege, but the easy bet for me on suspicion of being the best horse, and best horse with 54 kilos. Could be going on to better stuff. Uh, $9 to find out. Uh, Hellfast from Siege. So, Tsuri, other than uh, Brutality, who's your best on the day? Uh, best on the day will be... Ekaterina, uh, I've got a rated odds on $3.55. Uh, I do think though that first race too was pretty good with that self-indulgent and Amity Gal. Uh, yep. Other races, not as much value, but definitely those two, those first two races will go early in those first two. Well, geez, I might have to have another look at this Ekaterina and see if I can get anywhere near close to your price because at the moment I'm nowhere near it. Um, maybe I missed something there. Anyway, I'll have another look at that one. That's why we chat, don't we, Sooty? Sometimes exactly you right. know, I, we don't really pay attention to anybody else, but we might just double-check our own work just in case if somebody smart gives us a, has a differing opinion. You know? <laughs> okay, thanks, Sooty. Thanks for coming on, mate. And everybody, yeah, um, this isn't an ad. They don't pay any money or anything like that, but there's just fantastic odds available, and um, I want you guys to be the ones to take advantage of it at Combat, mate. So uh, good luck and good punning, and thanks, Sooty. Cheers. Thanks, good.